Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and Horror. Today we will review the secrets of the Vistani, unraveling their mysterious rituals and their supernatural knowledge and skills. But first, a few warnings to the unwary travelers who approach the fire to hear their stories. The Vistani are a people who draw their inspiration directly from the Romani culture, mistakenly called gypsies. However, it's not possible to turn a blind eye to the fact that the Vistani are a somewhat stereotypical portrayal of this culture, much closer to the unjust portrayal that the Romani receive in the folklore and horror tales of the Western culture. Also, if you only know the Vistani through the recent Curse of Strahd adventure, you will find that the Vistani described here has a more detailed powers and abilities. The Curse of Strahd adventure does not go deep into the Vistani as the Ravenloft's old campaign setting. Still, the information contained in this video can be of great value to any dungeon master wishing to insert the Vistani into their campaign, regardless of the setting or adventure. Are you prepared? Then, let us go silently under the light of the full moon and advance into the forest. The Vistani's secret ritual is about to begin, and we will soon unravel the secrets of their mystical gifts. Power of Raven Tog divided into caravans, tribes and tasks, all Vistani share supernatural powers and rituals. These mystical abilities are much sought by those in need, but they also make them feared and hated by the Georgios. Almost every aspect of Vistani culture is strongly linked to rituals, from the simplest and most mundane acts to practices considered sacred. All tribes share these rituals, which imbue their acts with meaning and power. These rituals can range from simple acts, such as the triangular movement of throwing herbs into a cauldron, representing the cycle of nature, from earth to plants, from plants to man, from man back to earth, to their complex and festive dances, or the form in which they share their stories around a campfire. The choice of their campsites follows a ritualistic procedure. The captain, the caravan's male leader, assesses the conditions and space for the settlement and stands in the center of the camp, declaring Ki Yang, which roughly translates as Make Fire. The captain stands motionless in the position, waiting for the caravan animals and companions to position themselves. When the caravan finally comes into position, the tribe's female leader, the Rauni, heads to the center of the camp to confirm the captain's choice by repeating the words Ki Yang, or to refute the captain's decision if she identifies any evil omen or supernatural threat. Only with the Rauni's confirmation, the campfire is lit. When a Vistani encampment is to be disbanded, the caravan captain determines that all traces of their presence must be erased, and the ashes of the bonfires are buried. Only then, with his hand over the place where the ashes of the campfire were buried, the captain pronounces Daya Yang, something that translates as leave the fire, and the caravan departs for a new destination. Once the camp is set up, the campfire is lit, and the camp is filled with aromas and flavors as the Vistani prepare their food. After feeding, rather than retreating to their vados, the Vistani remove their strings and percussion instruments and begin the pastranata ritual. The melody is sometimes cheerful and sometimes melancholy and is accompanied by a passionate dance around the fire. The young members of the tribe rotate in elaborate movements, which often reflect the mood of the caravan. At the end of the pastranata, 
when the warmth and excitement of the dance is over, a more sober ritual begins. Sitting around the fire, the Vistani prepare for the Dorog, as all the caravan gather to hear their legends and stories. The traditions of the Vistani culture are passed orally, from the elders to the young, and their meaning and wisdom is then debated among all the Dorog participants. On the rare occasion when a Giorgio is invited to participate in this ritual, they are also encouraged to share their stories and knowledge. The Vistani are also known for practicing lunar rituals, especially during the full moon period. During this time, the Vistani usually place their camp far from urban centers and towns and isolate themselves for their rituals. The three days of the full moon represent a period when the Vistani are very active and focus on resolving issues. The Vistani believe that during a lunar cycle, unresolved issues must be terminated so that the energies can once again flow in favor of the Vistani. The term Lunari is used by the Vistani whenever an agreement or a promise is made, indicating that the obligation will be fulfilled until the next full moon. During the full moon, the Vistani believe that the mystical energies are most potent, and it's a time to create amulets, enchantments, to perform divinations, and even to utter curses upon their enemies. On the last night of the full moon, the Vistani practiced the Lunaset, a secret ritual of unknown purpose to those without the Vistani blood. Many speculate that this ritual renews the Vistani connection with the mystical energies of the lands of the mist. At midnight, under the brilliance of the full moon, the entire Vistani caravan leaves the camp and runs towards the nearest forest in absolute silence. Strange sounds can be heard from the woods, and it's said that evil forces prowl the woods and forests, protecting the Vistani ritual from intruders. The few who have ever tried to witness what happens in such a ritual have been sorely cursed by the Vistani. At the end of the night, when the full moon disappears from the sky, the Vistani return to the camp, exhausted and introspective, and fall asleep until dusk. When night comes once again, they get up with renewed energies, and in good mood, hold festivities with music, dancing, games, and other types of relaxation. In addition to their rituals, the Vistani are also known for their skills and mystical gifts. Among the most well-known skills known to the Vistani is their ability to navigate the mists, crossing huge distances in a short time. While traveling this way, the around E of the caravan is able to conjure a dense fog. The caravan then begins to move through these dense mists, even with very low visibility, being guided by the caravan's captain. When the mists finally dissipate, the travelers emerge where they intended to be, sometimes crossing long distance through their paths in the mists. When mist traveling, they are able to travel long distance, and it's said that some of the most powerful tribes of the Vistani are even capable of travel through time in this way. This type of traveling through the mist is not without its danger, as on some rare occasions, monstrosities take shape in the mist to attack those who dare to cross it. Also common to some Vistani is the ability of prescient sight. This skill usually manifests itself in a few Vistani women, who are able to see the future through many different practices, such as a palm reading, in trails of animals reading, flame observation, casting of lots or small bones, astrology, or even observation of the movement of birds. However, of all forms of reading of the future, the most common among the Vistani is the use of the Taroka. Taroka is a deck of cards with images and symbols. By placing the cards in a pattern, the seer review the cards to read a person's future, perhaps for its practicality 
and efficiency. This divination method is the one most commonly used by the rowdy and seers of caravans, who never separate themselves from their stylized and colorful decks of cards. The Vistani believe that the gift of fortune telling is the result of their knowledge of time. This gift, however, is only found in a few women in the caravan and is identified since the birth of a child by the Rauni, who then trains the seer on how to use that art. Only women are tolerated as seers, but the Vistani believe that the knowledge of the past and the future is protected by death itself, which will persecute those who try to unravel it. Death, however, could not touch a woman who uses the gift of prescient sight. When a man is born with the gift of prescient sight, the child is immediately executed by the caravan. This cruel taboo comes from the Bistani belief that a man with the gift of sight is a dukkah, a word that translated as persecuted by death. To escape death, the dukkah must become an evil agent and a causer of great tragedy and destruction, and his visions will invariably lead to death and suffering. This is a taboo among the Vistani, and they rarely discuss it with Giorgio, who would not understand the need for the child's termination. Vistani legends say that the Dukkah will one day be responsible for the destruction and extermination of all Vistani people. Two figures are told in legends to be occupants of this cursed title. The first Dukkah was named Iskosa, whose prophecies predicted the end of the Lands of the Mists, in a great cataclysm known as the Great Conjunction. This tragic destiny almost destroyed everything, but has been avoided by intervention of some adventurers, and little is known about the final destiny of Iskosa. The other one to receive the title of Dukkha is a motive of great concern and fear by the Vistani, as they claim that he is Malocchio Adere, the current tyrannical ruler of the kingdom of Invidia, responsible for a politic of genocide and persecution of the Vistani. In addition to their ability to predict the future, the Vistani are also known for their ability to find and track people. Using an artifact used by the target, a Rauni can use a stick or a needle to discover the direction in which a person is. The Rauni can still use the same needle to slow their target. She pierces the tip of her finger with the needle and tie it to a string behind her vargo. As the needle is dragged across the road and earth, all sorts of mishaps and bad luck will strike the target to slow him down while he is chased by the Vistani. This mysterious people has a strange relationship with some animals, which seem to respond to their commands. Vistani caravans are often accompanied by flocks of tiny birds, known as Vista Chiris, small grey and white birds, which are hard to find when hidden on the top of trees. When you spot a flock of these birds, there is a good chance of finding a caravan of the Vistani nearby. A stranger must be careful, however, as it's said that the Rauni can talk to these birds and use them as spies or guardians, as they ship issuing warnings when strangers approach the camp. Another fear ability of the Vistani is their ability to utter curses on their enemies. Although in the land of the mist, the ability of angry and wronged people to utter curses upon enemies is not unknown. The Vistani have the ability to utter curses in their victims even without being seized by the spark of hatred. Fear of these curses causes many Giorgios to avoid the Vistani, and those who deal with them think twice before deciding to offend or betray their interests. Their curses are often elaborate and endowed with poetic and ironic elements, and may be a simple means to irritate and frustrate their disaffections, or effectively a way to torture their enemies and even threat their lives. 
The most simple curses are called scars by the Vistani and are often embarrassing, frustrating or problematic. An embarrassing curse aims to cause shame on its victims, such as a compulsion to eat insects, for instance. A frustrating curse usually means that the target cannot succeed in simple and routine actions. A blacksmith could see all his weapons go blunt, his nails crooked, or a scribe could find that the ink is always dry on his quill. A troublesome curse could make a skilled swordsman impulsively draw his dagger instead of the sword at the beginning of a combat, or to always hesitate in the face of imminent danger. When a Vistani is seriously offended, he may use a more powerful curse, known as a Doombringer. This type of curse is more potent and can be dangerous, alienating, torturing or even lethal. A dangerous curse can make a victim crave for danger. A victim of this kind of curse could act impulsively in the face of dangerous situations, or being unable to escape a combat, even if heavily injured. An alienation curse usually marks the offender to the society. A thief's hand may turn black, a man's shadow may disappear, or he may slowly begin to show traits of a wild beast in his face, drawing him away from his peers. A torture curse serves to torment its victim in their deepest desires. The poisoned carrot is a type of curse that increases the victim's desires for someone or something, but gives the target full awareness that tragedy will occur if he reaches his desire. A target in love may know that his touch will kill his loved one, or a powerful paladin might know that his holy weapon will always accidentally shed innocent blood if drawn. Finally, the most terrible and lethal of curses is the curse of Mishanel. This curse can only be cast by a Rowney, and it takes a few days to produce its full effects, in which the victim desperately faces terrible transformations that will eventually lead him to his death. Examples of this terrible fate may be the progressive putrefaction and loss of body parts, the slowly petrification of the body until it becomes a statue, or the slow transformation of a victim in a dead tree trunk. To cast a powerful curse such as a Mishamel, the Rowney usually need a lock of hair or some clothing or personal object of the victim. In its absence, the Rowney could still utter the curse through the representation of the victim in the form of a doll of his image or even to an animal sacrifice. In uttering the curse, the Zitins are thrown into the fire, while the Haoni proclaim the fate of the victim. After uttering a curse on his victim, only the Vistani who cast it can release the victim of his fate. For a curse to be cast effectively, however, it must always have a reversal clause, usually with some form of penance for the offenses committed. Among all these supernatural gifts, is it possible that the Vistani themselves are also victims of a curse, doomed to forever wander the world without finding a home? When a Vistani leaves his nomadic life and settles in a single place, he suffers the terrible effects of an unknown disease. After a few days in this condition, they begin to suffer an intense fever. The fever lasts for days, and then it miraculously disappears. After that, they seem to be healed, but all the gifts and mystical abilities of the Vistani are forever lost. These doomed people are no longer considered a Vistani by their peers, and are called a mortal, a fate worse than death. Another powerful and feared ability of the Vistani is the evil eye. When a Vistani crosses his eyes with a victim, he can focus all his fury and negative energy on his opponent. The power of the Vistani willpower can paralyze, terrorize and even hypnotize their victims for a short time. Some reports say that an evil eye can even cause seizures in some of their victims, 
and possibly cause the victim's death. Perhaps because of all of these supernatural abilities, Vistani camps are rarely harassed by creatures and monsters. Some theorize that the Rowdies have a strong mystical protection over their camps, or that their ability to predict the future puts them far from the path of these dangers. However, some theorize that the Vistani might have control over their dark forces, or even that the creatures of the night will not come close to their camp because they fear the supernatural powers of the Vistani. In the dead of night, under the moonlight, we follow through the forest to observe the secret ritual of the Lunaset. We follow the trail of the Vistani, who ran barefoot through the woods, but we are surrounded by ghostly sounds and noises that seem to follow us. As we approach a clearing, we can hear their voices in a ritual, but our position is revealed by the shifting of little nocturnal birds, which alert the Vistani of our presence. Soon, the Rowney advances toward us, and under her hard gaze we are gusted by our curiosity to share their fate, wandering forever through these dark lands to witness the horrors that wander in the dark, until our curiosity leads us to our destruction. O oh, cursed ones, you should now subscribe to this channel and proceed with us through this dark forest as we move away from the Vistani and the green sound of laughter from the old Rauni to discover new mysteries and horrors as we travel the lands of the mist.